Kim, as we just saw, producers really have to weigh all their options for what they need on their operation. Yeah, but what works for one farmer probably won't work for another. So each farm is an individual unit. I've talked to uh, producers over the last week that uh, some say that, yes, that's good. You got to keep costs low. If you can do your own repair, if you can use old equipment, if you depends on the size and the amount of management you're willing to put into it. Because if you run older equipment, it's going to take a higher degree of management and you're going to have more breakdown. On the other side, I've had producers say those GP units, they, they're going to more than pay for themselves with their percentage precision, you're not going over the land twice and you're covering it all and that, and that precision is important. So it just depends on the situation, just depends on the farm, the requirements and the manager. Let's dive into some of this week's news and now starting with the world markets. What's the latest? Well, if you look at uh, world wheat market, uh, production is projected to be 28.1 billion. That's just a slight record over the last year's 28 billion bushels. We may or may not make that. Uh, you, your Australia crop, they continue to lower that. They continue to lower the uh, Argentine crop just a little bit. You know, they had a record. It's not a record now. Russia, uh, they're about 98% harvested. We still don't have a good handle on, on the size of their crop. And of course, they've been increasing France's crop. So a lot going on there, but we've got a lot of wheat in this world. Well, let's talk about U.S. Uh, wheat exports and kind of comparisons to last year. Well, exports have been going relatively well. You look at uh, U.S. wheat export sales, they're 11% for all wheat above last year, but our, our outstanding sales, that's that wheat that's in storage, it hadn't been shipped yet, it's 14% below last year. Hard red winter wheat sales 43% above last year. That's really good. We've already shipped it all, or the majority of it uh, were 15% below last year's wheat in storage to be shipped. Uh, soft red winter wheat, 17% uh, sales above last year, 2% uh, below last year, but all exports are below the five-year average. Let's talk about Russia now. Any changes in their exports? Yeah, there's quite a bit going on in Russia. Their exports are projected to be lower this year, but there's, there's some, I've noticed some changes in the market in the pricing system. Uh, this last week uh, on export sales to uh, Egypt, Russia was cut out by, they were underbid by Ukraine, by France, and by Romania. So they didn't get any sell into to, uh, Egypt. And what we're seeing is Russian wheat producers are, they built storage and they're starting to, sh to store their crop. Uh, last year or in past years, they've had debt, they've had, uh, they needed that cash flow out. They've uh, lowered their debt, they've got the storage, and now they're storing wheat for later in the year. And I think that's going to change our price patterns. Well, with that in mind, do those Black Sea exporters then still com control the prices? Yeah, I think they still have the major influence. Uh, this last sale that Russia, they were actually overpriced for it, but Ukraine, they're, they're harvesting a record crop. They're going to export more wheat than they did last year. Ukraine cut in, came in and set that price along with France. So with that in mind, will the world need Oklahoma's 2020 wheat? I think they will because uh, we've got an excess of wheat, but we don't have an excess. I think we really have a slight shortage of milling quality wheat. And, and when we come into 2020, I believe the world's going to need our wheat as long as we got 60 pound test weight and 12 and a half percent protein. And where have you heard that before? Of course, right here. All right. As always, Kim, thanks a lot. And that will do it for us this week. We will see you next time at Sunup.